Board games can be valuable teaching tools in any classroom. If you're looking for ways to integrate board games into your curriculum delivery, stick around and find out our top 10 games for doing just this. Here at Legendary Tactics, we have both elementary and secondary school teachers on board. And as we started compiling our top 10 list, it quickly became apparent that we needed to divide our list into two categories. We're going to start by looking at games that focus on the intermediate classroom. So let's get started. Coming in at number 10 is Dixit. In this imaginative storytelling adventure, one player looks at the images on the six cards in their hand. From these, they make up a sentence and say it out loud. Each other player selects a card in their hand which best matches the sentence and gives it to the storyteller without showing it to the other players. The storyteller shuffles their card with the received cards. All pictures are shown face up and each player has to bet upon which card the storyteller was talking about. The game ends when the deck is empty or a player scores 30 points. A simple, straightforward game that is perfect for any English class as it requires players to tap into their creative and imaginative skills to weave together stories and ideas that will help them accomplish a winning play. Following any game of Dixit is a perfect opportunity for students to further develop a storyline that was started in the game and expand upon it in a creative story writing assignment. At number nine, we have Mastermind. Dating back to 1971, this classic game should not be overlooked. Mastermind is the first of several abstract games that we've included in this list. In brief, it is a two-player game in which one player secretly puts four colored pegs in the spaces behind a screen at the end of the board. The other player, the code breaker, makes a series of guesses. After each guess, the code maker uses small pegs to tell the code breaker if they guessed pegs in the correct color or the correct space, or if they are wrong entirely. The code breaker makes another guess in the next row, building upon information from previous guesses, trying to match the pegs the code maker has hidden. The player guessing the four pegs has to guess the color pattern in the correct order of the hidden pegs before their guesses run out. This game is great for getting students to think critically and use the process of elimination to gain information about what color scheme the hidden pattern contains and is a great mind-stretching exercise. At number eight is Quarto. Quarto has a four x four board and 16 pieces. Each piece has four dichotomous attributes, color, height, shape, and consistency. So each piece is either black or white, tall or short, square or round, and hollow or solid. The object is to place the fourth piece in a row which contains all four pieces that have at least one attribute in common. The interesting twist is that your opponent gets to choose the piece that you place on the board each turn. This game is great for the science or math class, especially when trying to illustrate the concept of attributes. With this game, students will quickly come to realize that one shape brings with it many characteristics that make it unique. And it is when combining it with other objects that are different, yet similar, that they will find victory. At number seven is Settlers of Catan, a resource building game that offers players the opportunity to build roads, settlements, and cities with the resources that they acquire. At the same time, they are looking for gaining advantages through acquiring development cards, negotiating trades with fellow players, and building armies. There are many ways that this integrates into an intermediate classroom. There is the economics of diversification of resources to consider, the mathing of the quickest path to 10 points, which is the victory margin, and the art of negotiations to craft, and of course, the geographic angle of examining the game's core resources of ore, wood, wheat, brick, and sheep. There is a lot here. At number six is Wingspan. This is a slightly higher level game to play in terms of complexity, but offers a lot for the science classroom. In Wingspan, you are putting birds into one of three habitats. As you place your birds into each, you will require the resources of specific food types and eggs to add. Each bird you place gives you a bonus of some kind, and many are repeating bonuses that you can come back to as you take your turn each round. Each bird card in Wingspan offers a lot of facts and information about that particular bird and is a valuable resource for any student interested in birding. Although a more challenging game to learn, this game will shine in any science classroom that wishes students to look more carefully at wildlife and birds in particular. 
Number five, Ticket to Ride. Ticket to Ride is a straightforward railway placement game that, although not complex to learn, can offer a lot of educational value in the classroom. The main feature of the game is to gain railway ticket destinations and then compile trains of matching colors and placing them on the appropriate routes in order to make the connections work. As tickets are completed, more tickets can be gained. This game is fun, easy to learn, and as a teaching tool is fantastic for highlighting major transportation hubs across the US and with a variety of expansions into many European countries as well. There is the obvious connections to any American geography course, but underlying elements include the history of the railways and their developments across North America. Chess. This is a classic that it must be said is a timeless game and one that should be on the shelf of any classroom. I won't spend time discussing what this game is about as its universal appeal has done enough there. It is an abstract puzzling game that offers students the opportunity to really map out a long-term path to victory. One of the great teaching tools I think chess offers is the notion of sacrifice. For example, trading a rook for a bishop. This helps reinforce with students the value of the pieces that they have at their disposal in this timeless game. Number three, Article 27. This game gets its title from Article 27 of the United Nations Charter, which includes these two provisions. One, each member of the Security Council shall have one vote. Two, decisions of the Security Council on procedural matters shall be made by an affirmative vote of nine members. Article 27 is a negotiation-based game where players represent one member of the United Nations Security Council and will both present and be presented with different proposals. Each round, one player acts as the UN Security General and presents a proposal to the Council and presides over a negotiation period that lasts no more than five minutes. The proposal will affect any of five issues, military, currency, etc., in various ways and each player has a secret document for the round that tells them how a change in each issue will affect them. All players openly negotiate on what they want in terms of points and bribes in order to vote for that proposal. The security general closes the negotiations by banging the wooden gavel, then all players vote yes or no on the proposal. Any no vote kills the proposal, as in the United Nations actual Security Council. This game is perfect for any course or lesson that wants to engage students into looking at how the UN operates. It offers a unique perspective on the wheeling and dealing of negotiations that go in order to table, pass, and affirm resolutions. A great game that will also offer students a fun experience as well. At number two, we have Brass Birmingham. Released in 2018, Brass Birmingham tells the story of competing entrepreneurs in Birmingham during the Industrial Revolution. This was between the years of 1770 to 1870. You are tasked to develop, build, and establish your industries and networks in an effort to exploit low or high market demands. Each round, players take turns according to the turn track, receiving up to two actions from the following, build, network, develop, sell, loan, or scout. The game is played over two halves, the Canal Era, which was 1770 to 1830, and the Rail Era, 1830 to 1870. To win the game, score the most VPs. VPs are counted at the end of each half for canals, rails, and established industries. This makes the game perfect for any history classroom. A little bit of a heavier game to learn, Brass Birmingham is brimming with educational potential. Once taught to the students, it will introduce them to one of the latest trending board games currently on the market. Along with this, it will serve beautifully to reinforce lessons on the Industrial Revolution up to 1870. And our number one game for the intermediate classroom is Pandemic. With a playtime of just under one hour, Pandemic has players working as a team to stop a virus that is spreading across the globe. Each player takes on a special role that brings a particular special ability they are able to utilize throughout the game. The goal of the team is, of course, to exterminate the virus. The current state of global affairs makes this game extremely relevant and will help students better understand the global impact of our own global situation. Pandemic is a great cooperative game if you're trying to reinforce world geography, transportation routes, and international connections, 
or having students consider how pandemics can start and spread. It also demonstrates some of the roles involved in ending pandemics. The game also has, since its original release, added in Pandemic Season 0, Season 1, and Season 2, which are living games that change as you play, with the narrative changing with each game played. To wrap up, almost all of these games have more content appeal than just the subjects mentioned. For example, most any game mentioned can be used as an English lesson for students to demonstrate procedural writing. If you're looking to expand your students' learning experience, why not consider the gaming experience as one way to accomplish this? That said, as our local high school teacher Flash has always said, it's not so much the game itself, it's how the teachers choose to use and integrate the game into their curriculum delivery that will give students a fantastic and rich learning experience. We hope that this has been of some help to you. If you enjoyed this top 10 list for games in the intermediate classroom, or have comments and suggestions for other games, please share below on your own experiences or insights. We'd love to hear from you. And don't forget to like and subscribe. This has been Legendary Tactics.